Welcome to Socials with the Saints. Are you looking for hope and inspiration? Grab a cup of tea or your favorite beverage and spend some time with us as we meet role models throughout church history and discuss how they can help us in our daily pilgrimage of life. Hello and thank you for joining us. Welcome to Socials with the Saints. Our mission is to inspire you in your daily pilgrimage of life by introducing you to the communion of saints. I'm Jason Nunez, Media Production Coordinator for Pilgrim Center of Hope, a Catholic ministry founded in 1993 with the mission of helping you walk your journey of daily life in hope with Christ and the Church. Socials with the Saints are opportunities to learn from role models of faith and from one another for fellowship, prayer, and receiving spiritual tools. Today, we'll be shining a light on St. Januarius, whose blood is known worldwide for a miracle that happens each year. We are recording this podcast as a resource for those of you who cannot attend our in-person Socials with the Saints gathering. You are most welcome to join us on the third Thursday of every month in San Antonio, Texas. Visit pilgrimcenterofhope.org for more information about our in-person Socials with the Saints gatherings. Now, have you ever heard of St. Januarius or stories of the miracles associated with his blood? St. Januarius was born in the 3rd century and died in the year 305. His feast day is celebrated on September 19th, and his patronage is blood donors, blood banks, Naples, and volcano eruptions. Little is known about the life of Januarius. He came from a rich aristocratic family. Januarius became a priest and later the bishop of Benevento. When Emperor Diocletian started the Christian persecutions, unfortunately, Bishop Januarius was arrested. Later, Bishop Januarius and several other Christians were sentenced to be thrown to wild bears in the Flavian Amphitheater in Pozzuoli, a small city outside Naples, and their bears failed to devour them, so they changed his sentence to a beheading. After St. Januarius' public execution, a faithful woman named Eusebia collected his blood in two vials to keep as a relic. The practice of gathering blood for relics was a common practice beginning in the days of persecution when the early Christians soaked clothes in the blood shed by martyrs or, if possible, actually collect the liquid in flasks to keep as a devotional item. In the catacombs, these flasks were buried with the dead. Their discovery indicated that the person had died a martyr. St. Januarius' body remains are preserved in the crypt beneath the cathedral of the Archdiocese of Naples. His blood is also preserved there in two glass vials and are placed in a round flask. The dry blood of St. Januarius extraordinarily liquefies and then becomes solid once again, a phenomenon first recorded in the year 1389. The liquefaction typically occurs on his feast day and has occurred at other times in the presence of holy people, such as visiting popes. In fact, the mysterious liquefaction of the blood relic has rarely occurred. The dried blood of St. Januarius, which is preserved in two glass vials or flasks in the Naples Cathedral, it traditionally liquefies three times a year. On the saint's September 19th feast, which commemorates his martyrdom in the Catholic liturgical calendar, December 16th, the date of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 1631, which was believed to have been halted through the saint's intervention, and the Saturday before the first Sunday in May. On March 15, 2015, when Pope Francis was addressing the diocesan priest, a religious in the city's cathedral, the blood half liquefied. The Archbishop of Naples was present when this occurred and said, quote, It is a sign that St. Gennario loves the Pope, who is Neapolitan like us, unquote. Pope Francis immediately and lightheartedly replied, quote, The Archbishop said the blood is half liquefied, It means that the saint loves us halfway. We all have to convert a little more so that he loves us more, unquote. It was the first time St. Januarius' blood relic had had liquefied in the presence of a pontiff since the miracle occurred in the presence of Pope Pius IX in 1848. Pius IX was the longest reigning elected pope in the history of the Catholic Church, which was 31 years. A little bit of information about Pope Pius IX. He convened the First Vatican Council which decreed papal infallibility, defined the dogma of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, meaning that Mary was conceived without original sin, and he was the last pope to rule as a sovereign 
of the Papal States, which fell to the Italian army in 1870, the Pope expressed his desire to go to the Cathedral of Naples. There, the miracle of St. Gennaro occurred in his presence in 1848. Now, here are some key facts as it relates to the liquefaction of St. Januarius' blood. Number one, the blood is kept in two glass vials or flasks. The dried blood of St. Januarius, who died around 305 AD, is preserved in two glass ampules, one larger than the other, in the chapel of the treasury of the Naples Cathedral. Number two, the liquefaction is a miracle. The church believes that the miracle takes place in response to the dedication and prayers of the faithful. When the miracle occurs, the mats of reddish dried blood adhering to one side of the ampule turns into completely liquefied blood, covering the glass from side to side. Number three, the liquefaction can take days. The liquefaction process sometimes takes hours or even days, but sometimes it does not happen at all. Normally, after a period that can range from two minutes to an hour, the solid mass turns red and begins to bubble. The two glass ampules, which contain a dark solid mass, are enclosed in a reliquary that is held up and rotated sideways by a priest to show the blood has liquefied. This is usually done by the Archbishop of Naples while the people pray. Note, an ampule is a small sealed vial which is used to contain and preserve a simple, usually a solid liquid. According to the Italian Catholic magazine, Familia Cristiana, the reliquary which the ampules remains on the view for the faithful for eight days, during which they can kiss it while the priest turns it to show that the blood is still liquefied. Then it is returned to the safety vault and locked away inside the chapel of the treasury of the cathedral. Number four, the faithful venerate the relic every year. With the exclamation, the miracle has happened, the people approach the priest holding the reliquary to kiss the relic and sing Te Deum in thanksgiving. Number five, there is no scientific explanation. Several investigations have already been conducted in the past to find scientific explanation that answers the question of how something solid can suddenly liquefy, but none has been satisfactory so far. Number six, liquefaction does not always occur. When the blood doesn't liquefy, the Neapolitans take it as an omen of misfortune. The blood did not liquefy on September 1939, 1940, 1943, 1973, 1980, nor in December 2016 and 2020. The relic also remained solid the year Naples elected a communist mayor, but it spontaneously liquefied when the late Archbishop of New York, uh, Cardinal Terence Cook, visited the St. January's Shrine in 1978. Number seven, the blood has liquefied in the presence of some popes. In 2015, while Pope Francis was giving some advice to the religious priests and seminarians of Naples, the blood liquefied again. The last time liquefaction occurred before a pontiff was in 1848 when Pius IX visited. It did not happen when John Paul II visited the city in October 1979 or in the presence of Benedict XVI in October 2007. Now, here are some quotes on martyrdom. Quote, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, unquote. This is from Tertullian. Quote, for Jesus Christ, I am prepared to suffer still more, unquote. St. Maximilian Kobe. Another is, quote, the martyr gave their bloods for the truth, and you are not able to come to church? They gave their lives for Christ, and you cannot make a small journey to him? Unquote. That is from St. John Chrysostom. And one more. Quote, Mary was a martyr, not by the sword of the executioner, but by bitter sorrow of heart. Unquote. That is by St. Bernard. Wow, what a story. Here are a few questions for you to ponder. What struck you about what you just heard? What stood out to you in this story? How does the life of the saint teach and challenge you in your spiritual life? What lessons will you take with you from this saint? into your daily life. We invite you to please leave a comment on the YouTube post that corresponds with this episode or on the podcast app that you listen to this episode on. And also, you can send us an email to ministry at pilgrimcenterofhope.org. That's ministry 
at pilgrimcenterofhope.org. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. You can also download a printable pamphlet with this story, as well as a quote card on martyrdom on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. That's pilgrimcenterofhope.org. The link will be included in the podcast description of this episode. And the quote that will be on that card is, The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church by Tertullian. St. Januarius, pray for us. Thank you for joining us on Socials with the Saints. We invite you to come visit Pilgrim Center of Hope and learn more about our threefold ministry of pilgrimages, conferences, and outreach. Visit pilgrimcenterofhope.org or call us at 210-521-3377. That's 210-521-3377. Socials with the Saints podcast will be continuing in this simple, storytelling and meditative manner for the first half of 2023. Please make sure you stay up to date with details about this wonderful events. You can do so by liking our Pilgrim Center of Hope Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our email list by visiting our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Until next time, remember, we are a pilgrim people, and on your journey, you are never alone in the communion of saints. May God bless you.